Hello everyone, my name is Loco, and this time it's going to be time for another game of StarCraft 2. This time it's going to be another continuation of the best of nine between spawning in the bottom right corner of Ohana. It's Liquid Hero and in the bottom left, of in the top left corner rather, we have spawning as the Red Zerg MVP DRG. And if you haven't seen the other games yet, well, this is game seven in a uh, best of nine series like I already said and at this point in time it's actually four versus two in the favor of Liquid Hero so Liquid Hero only needs to win one more game whereas his opponent DRG needs to win yeah he needs to win three more yeah they always say math uh, doing math on uh, on YouTube videos or on stream is a scary thing to do so I'm not going to do that too much so here we go, uh, we see already a uh, nice stylistic choice right here by Liquid Hero opening up with a pile on the low ground. So it looks like he's indicating to go for a early Nexus like he did in most other games. If not all other games actually, I don't know actually. He probably did it in pretty much all of the games besides of course the six pool where he actually opened up with a uh, pile on the low ground or in the foreground as well, followed up by a uh, forge. So it looks like MVP DRG is not doing any kind of that style though. He's not going for the uh, for the six pool build like he did in the other games, but just going for a 14 spawning pool. Actually, with his 14 drone that he built, and putting it instantly. And actually, is that a 13 drone? I don't know exactly. I think it's the 14 drone put into a spawning pool right when it was uh, morphed. So it it was a cocoon, then it was a drone building, and then for, it was a drone for like one second instantly uh, morphed into a spawning pool. Looks like he's going to send a drone at 16. So uh, to the uh, to the natural most likely gonna get a oh he's actually not yeah okay okay no it actually looked like he was gonna check for any kind of hidden pilot yeah he's just checking for hidden pilots right now or any kind of hidden buildings because well this might as well be his last game and he you no know, he don't want to risk it so he's just going to send it a little bit early and actually uh, prevent any kind of cannon rush if he can so it looks like he is going to see this probe right now from moving in. So he knows Liquid Hero has a probe out on the map. And he knows he has to uh, worry a little bit about the cannon rush. Uh, because, well, Liquid Hero can just move around this little edge right here. And maybe put a pylon and a cannon right there if he wants to. But of course, nothing of that is going on. Because TRG right now sees it as well. He knows that Nexus is going down. He knows there's a gateway down even. So he knows Liquid Hero is playing pretty greedy. And he knows there's no way there can be a cannon rush anytime soon. Because... Well, Nexus just costs money, or Nexus I, Nexus I, I don't know. Nexus costs money, and you know, normally, Zerg players, um, Zerg players of the world, please take note. Once you see a Nexus and you see a gateway and a cannon like that, there's just, there's really no way you could uh, could be up against the cannon rush. So you really don't need to check for this, like uh, yeah, like you do, like you see DRG do. You don't really need to check for that at all. Actually, he gets the cannon up right there, so a little bit of a delay on the third base of the Zerg player. Nice catch right there by Liquid Hero. Of course, the natural is already finished right now for DRG. Second queen is about to pop as well, having uh, full saturation pretty much in his main and right now rallying to the natural as much as he can. Gonna pump out as many drones, of course, as he can. Having four Zerglings out on the map as well as a scouting overlord, seeing everything that is going on at this point in time. Right now he sees those uh, those little thingies right now going up on the gateway, so he knows the Zealot is being built, because there's no way a uh, Cybernetic Core can be done yet. Of course, the Cybernetic Core is about halfway done. Two gas are already being mined right now by Liquid Hero, so this is looking so far for a fairly standard game. Of course, I might as well be wrong, because, well... There's lots of things the Protoss player can do. For example, like what I've never really seen a Protoss player do is actually pull drones off of gas in general. But right now he could pull off drones off gas and actually get the extra mineral income and make a bunch of gateways while uh, chrono boosting his uh, warp gates. I've never really seen that, but of course he's not going to do any kind of that because he's already getting the third assimilator up. And we have to see if he's going for a fourth assimilator anytime soon. If he is going to stay at three assimilators or three gas guys, just it is most likely indicated that he is going for a, a timing kind of push show might be blink stalkers might be a seven gate with plus one attack or whatever right now uh, we see the sixth or the third gas instantly being mined with gas and um, yeah fairly standard play right there but oh my god what do we see on the pressure where is it okay there we go <laughs> the stargate is in the back of the base of liquid hero i wonder if this overlord will be able to scout it of course he is not seeing this stargate at this point in time and you know since liquid hero is already a few uh, few games ahead he can take a little bit of a risk I, it is four for two right now and yeah he, uh, he can actually lose two games and still be uh, pretty fine i gotta say so he can take out a pretty uh, a relatively risky build right now of course he's not going to do any kind of cheesy stuff 
stuff in this game, but he's just going to open up with a Stargate. And, you know, Stargate is one of the builds that can be blind countered as a Zerg player, of course. If the Zerg player basically goes for, uh, if you open up with Void Rays and your opponent goes for some kind of, uh, um, some kind of early Infestor play or maybe even Mutalisk, your, you know, your Void Rays pretty much, um, cancelled right away. There's no way you can actually do anything against that with a Stargate. Of course, you could make a few Phoenixes, but yeah. In general, Stargate is one of the riskier moves. Of course, the standard move being taking early four gases, taking his four gas right now actually, but taking early four gases, going for uh, Stalker Sentry seems to be the solid, the most solid and standard thing right now in Zerg versus Protoss. Um, but you know, he is playing versus MVP DRG. DRG, of course, loving his uh, Mutalisk, but right now he's only just now starting his lair. The 8 minute mark, so that's relatively late. Of course, already starting the Zirkling speed earlier, as well as getting an Evo Chamber right now, also relatively late. So, if there actually would have been a DT rush, he would have already lost the game because there was no way he could have had any kind of detection up. Maybe he actually just forgot it or something. He's actually playing a little bit sloppy, also way oversaturated in this third base. And this, uh, this evolution chamber is way way late actually just any kind of DT play any kind of early DT play which isn't really that weird when you're at the 4-2 uh, advantage in in a Zerg versus Protoss he could just take out uh, all the all the problems and just go for a DT rush and really there was nothing that the Zerg player could do Lair wasn't even started yet and the uh, evolution chamber only just now finished oh well we saw nothing of that we see the Void Raid right now moving across the map going to actually uh, see the creep right here so he knows all about his third base and he sees there's no gas taken just yet. However, there's already Spore Crawlers right now. It was three Queens as this base. It was a second Spore Crawler. So he's actually way over defended right there. However, he's also going to get a Spore Crawl in the main. As well as having already one done in the natural. Interesting choice to get the one in the main a little bit later uh, than the one in the natural. I would always, pretty much always get this. Like this angle is more expected than the one right through the middle, I would expect. So, you know. Interesting positioning on that Spore Crawler, of course, he has Zerklings at the third base right now, seeing that those rocks are being taken down while he's trying to actually... He's actually picking off some nice creep tumors right here, Observe, of course the Observer is right here, but he could actually just move in with all those queens, a little bit of a sloppy play, I gotta say, by DRG, maybe he's not the top of his game anymore, because he already played a bunch, of course, and he's behind, and might be a little bit uh, taken away after last game. So yeah, right now he actually could just take out this one uh, one Vordre with those three queens he has right there. And he has another queen right here as well as another queen in the main. So really, there's no use why he's not doing this while my phone is ringing. Shut up, phone. Um, so yeah, he's just using a, uh, losing a lot of free tumors for pretty much no reason at all. And I don't really get why he would do that. However, he is moving across the map right now. Well, there's a lot of Phoenix out already. Maybe this is the reason why he did not risk that. Because he does not want to lose all queens. But well... Losing a lot of creep tumors is no joke either. However, we see a lot of roaches already moving across the map. Roach Beat is about to finish. The Spire attack is already started. I wonder where it is. There it is. The Spire attack only just now uh, being about 10% or 20-ish percent done. Of course, the extra gas is being taken because, well, gases are really, really great when you go for a Mutalisk play because Mutalisk costs a lot of gas. But right, right, you see a big push right now into the third base of the Protoss play. You could actually try and cancel this out. But it looks like he's not going to risk it with all those phoenixes in the air that can lift pretty much every unit that he has right here. At least all the roaches and the roaches of course in this army under damage dealers. He might be able to pick up a few sentries actually. Uh, yeah, he's actually taking off quite a bunch. But he's not going to target fire it properly. And well, a lot of sentries managed to survive while the entire Zerg force is actually going down. Of course, the uh, the Zergling or the uh, Overlord drop is actually about to be finished right now. As you can see right there, the Fentral Sex upgrade um, letting the uh, Zerg units be carried. But right now, he's not getting the uh, Pneumatized Carapace, which basically means he cannot have the Overlord speed. I don't understand what he's doing. He's really playing weird. Right now, he has the, uh, the slow Overlords being able to carry stuff. Like, that doesn't make any sense because, well, why would you ever put slow Overlords full of units? That doesn't make any sense at all. And he's also getting eight Corruptors right now, which is not going to do a lot, actually. Maybe he just wants to cancel out those, uh, those Phoenixes and maybe he's scared of any kind of Colossus play at this point in time. But I gotta say, he plays, he plays weird. Like, I don't know. This is, this is kind of curious play right now. By DRG and uh, yeah, uh, maybe is a little bit uh, 
maybe he's a little bit out of it because of all the games that you've already played, like I already said. Also, not killing those rocks, there's no reason to not have those rock skills at this point in time. Also, not upgrading anything in his fire play, and I gotta say, maybe I'm a little bit critical, but he, uh, he definitely doesn't look like he's into the game at this point in time. Also, losing this... <coughs> oh my god. <coughs> Whoa. I almost died right here, but don't worry, it's all okay. I managed to survive. Of course, Phoenixes can cross the map uh, freely at this point in time, because Phoenixes are way quicker than Corruptors, and he's pretty much completely safe against any kind of play right now at this point in time. Of course, the Protoss player that is, he's actually warping in a few fake Colossus just to scare the Zerg army, I guess, yeah. And maybe this is also the reason why DRG um, started producing this army, because, well, He's just scared of any kind of Colossus play that would actually hallucinate. And there we actually see the uh, Pneumatic Carapace going down right now for the uh, Overlord. Only just now getting the speed upgrade on the Overlord where he has the, uh, the, the Carison or, or what is it called? I don't really know what it's called. But he can carry units inside of these Overlords for way too long and he's actually not using them. However, right now moving in all those Overlords and he might as well try to get a few Banelings up if he is able to. Wonder if he actually has Baneling Nest at this point in time. Doesn't look like it. No, he has no bailing nest at this point in time, so he's not going to be able to do anything. But right now, the uh, the Overlord speed is done, loading up a lot of roaches, as well as having a bunch of corruptors already on the map, which are basically not going to do anything because all those colossus are hallucinated. <gasps> Liquid Hero, why are you so clever? Oh, perfect force field right there by uh, Liquid Hero. And Liquid Hero is just cancelling out all those uh, Zerkings, pretty much. Nice force field once again. And, well, those Roach Drop, what are they going to achieve against this big ball of Protoss? And, you know, this looks like it's uh, basically a game over for DRG. He's really not into it anymore. It looks like this is going to be a clean sweep for the Protoss player, Liquid Hero. Looks like Liquid Hero is going to be able to actually win this best of nine. Of course, it's not over yet, but I would not say there's really any chance for the Zerg player to come back because it's Liquid Hero and Liquid Hero is maxed out right now. Also finishing up more and more upgrades and there we go. Final battle it looks like because the Zerg player he of course doesn't want to use any GG so I want to thank you all for watching. Uh, Liquid Hero manages to win the best of nine and yeah that's pretty much it guys. I want to thank you all for watching and have a great day. Bye!